Ah. Squids. I love how the Harley guys, they don't even look at me. Like, they don't even acknowledge my presence. <laughs> Hi! You know, one of the things I neglected to mention in my last uh, video, the one where I was talking about revamping uh, the channel and changing some things, was that of my face. My mug. Thanks, Volts. Oh, everybody's nice today. Um, I'm officially done hiding my face. There's really no point to it anymore. Uh, so those of you that ride with me that are vloggers, you no longer need to worry about blurring my mug. And there is my face. Yeah, so as I was saying, uh, the reason I decided not to show my face originally was not really for privacy reasons. I figure if the feds want to crack down on moto vloggers and, and come after a bunch of guys on motorcycles doing a bunch of hooligan things, it doesn't matter if your face or your license plate is, is blurred. Guess what? They're, they're going to find you. If they want to find you, they're going to find you. The reason I actually started hiding my face was more... It's more of like a mystique thing. It was more like... It's kind of like listening to the radio. You know, the vloggers I liked, something about not seeing their face added some sort of element of, of mystery to it. And then, kind of like you have a, a favorite radio personality or a DJ, and then when you see what they actually look like in person, you're kind of like, oh, okay. It's usually a letdown because you have this idea built in your head. But, I don't know. I feel like I'm over it. It's, I feel bad for making other vloggers blur my face. It's a pain in the ass, a royal Sweet Malibu. Royal pain in the ass doing the blurring. And I'm just, I don't care anymore. I just don't care anymore. I'm not gonna do some big, lame face reveal. That's just stupid. I'm just gonna start showing my face. Plus, you know, I have all these memories and I go out and I take pictures and before I couldn't post them on Instagram or Facebook because it has my face in them. And it's kind of like I'm only putting up some of the stuff that doesn't show my face. And I don't know, I'm just, I, I'm over it, I'm over it. I mean, the people at work, I would rather not know who I am, but those two lines, the likelihood of that crossing or somebody at work seeing me on YouTube or something is, is pretty much zero. So I'm just over it. I'm just gonna start showing my face. That's it. Hopefully I don't lose all my audience. Ugh, it smells like ass. Ugh. Well, that was quick. Well, since that was so quick, I might as well go ahead and do See It's Echo Stories Volume 4! I think I'll title this one um, Christmas Cult. So, my most recent serious girlfriend, uh, I think I might have mentioned, was British. And uh, she's now an ex girlfriend. But, uh, this guy is hauling ass on a scooter. Is that a scooter or a moped? Going through the sand. Scary. Well, they sand. So, anyway, uh, I went to England to, uh, visit her over the Christmas holidays a couple years ago. Not to visit her, she lives here. But to go visit her family over the Christmas holidays, uh, and for New Year's. This is two or three years ago? Three years ago? Three years ago. And, um... Anyway, I was there for Christmas, and on Christmas Eve, uh, her mother said, I'm going to some church to go to what I guess is kind of like a midnight mass for Christmas Day, but not really. So a non-denominational church, so it's kind of like a mass, and it happens right at midnight on Christmas Eve. Now, I am not a church-going person uh, at all. I'm not a particularly religious person. Um, and going to church is not something I practice ever. Um, but I figure, you know, what in Rome, what in England, uh, I might as well go. 
So uh, my girlfriend at the time was going to go. Her brother, who I was pretty friendly with, I'm going to get killed by this pelican, um, was like, are you crazy? I was drinking wine and smoking a cigar with him. And, and he was thinking, he was kind of, and he's an awful lot like me. And he was like, seriously, you're going to go to that? And I'm thinking, you know what? Why not? If I was in the States, it's not something I would do. But, but why not? Let's go do it. Um, look how pretty this is. So I decided to. Big mistake. So I'm, in, I'm staying in this little town called Edge. That's where they live, which is about two and a half mile, two and a half miles, two and a half hours uh, east, sorry, west, and I think slightly north of London. It's out in the country, not much around in the county of Gloucestershire. Those of you that are watching from England hopefully know what I'm talking about. Uh, so we drive over to another nearby town that was maybe like a half an hour drive away. I can't remember what it's called. And uh, we go in. From the outside, this Pulpus Church, and it, it, it's nothing special from the outside. It's in this old town. Of course, everything's old there. And it doesn't look like much from the outside at all. Um, and keep in mind, this is winter in England. It's cold. It's windy, and it's kind of snowing, kind of raining. And I have, a, you know, layers on and a big wool pea coat and a beanie and gloves and the whole deal. And I'm a spoiled brat from Southern California, so I'm, I'm all bundled up. And uh, anyway, walk into this, uh, file into the, uh, the main room, uh, I guess you could call it, the, uh, where the altar is and all that. And it's small. The whole thing probably only holds maybe uh, 50 or 60 people. But there are, I, I'm not exaggerating, down the aisles and around the outside of the room, there are probably hundreds of candles burning. Hundreds, a lot, a lot of candles. Mongolia. Anyway, hundreds, hundreds of candles burning. And uh, people kind of file in, and people are chatting a little bit, but it's, it's pretty quiet. And then as everybody gets seated and settled, it is deathly quiet. People get so, and I know church is a quiet affair, but this was like, this was like eerie quiet. This was like, and... I noticed that the temperature is just rising and rising because now they've closed the doors and I'm still wearing my coat. But it's so quiet, I'm, I've become like afraid to take off my coat because of the noise I'll have to make to move around just to get my coat off. It's that quiet. And everyone is just sitting there like a zombie. Look how big her phone is. It's like she's holding a, like a laptop to her face. It's weird. First it was like phones get smaller and now phones are getting bigger. So I start sweating. I, it's so hot. It starts getting hotter and hotter, but I'm too afraid to move. Anyway, finally, these guys come out on stage in robes, but it's not like your regular pasture robes or garments. This is like cult, pagan, I don't know. I'm expecting them to walk out with a goat and a big saber and I've slit its throat. I mean, it's weird. Hood, the hoods, the whole, the whole deal. And it's, it gets really weird. It gets just weird and weird and weird. This thing is, I don't know. It's a kind of a mass. They did all these crazy weird chants and it was in English, a lot of it, but they were like repeating the same thing over and over again. And some of it was kind of Bible verses, but some of it was something else. It's kind of fuzzy. I don't remember the things I said completely, but I remember sitting there just sweating my ass off. Just so, and I just wanted to get up and leave. It's so bad, but I was just afraid to move. And I'm just pouring sweat down my face. Um, it was awful. And it went on for like an hour and all these weird chants. And then at the end, they sort of ask people to, if they want to come up, and which, which I guess was some sort of kind of communion, but it wasn't. And it was just super bizarre and weird, the whole thing. Uh, and I, I was uncomfortable, not just because I was hot, because it was just so weird. And people chanted along, and uh, it was just, the whole thing was just super creepy. Who is that handsome devil? When we left, you know, I'm trying to be polite and make a good impression on my girlfriend's mother, and I'm thinking, She's a weirdo. She does this all. This this is her church. This is what she attends all the time. And uh, it turned out it's not. She just heard about it and decided to go. 
she doesn't usually go to church too and didn't really know to expect herself and fortunately both of them thought it was as uncomfortable and odd and bizarre as as I did uh, it was really weird all this chanting and moaning and weird dudes with really deep voices and hooded shawls and, uh, uh, this is a